Hello, hello. Good morning from Cincinnati, Ohio. Today is actually my last day here. I go back to New York tomorrow morning. But anyways, today's date is, oh shoot, what is today's date? Today is Tuesday, December 27th, 28th. <laughs> today is Tuesday, December 28th, 2021 coming at you to share this because I ran out of ink writing it in my journal and I need to record this before I forget any like key details that I'm still remembering so basically I did a actually okay so this this is the second week of sacred union on the Queen of Fua um, sacred woman book journey rites of passage all of that so Sacred union is about your relationship with your mate. Obviously, if you if you want one, and I think most people want a mate, there are some that don't, but for the most part, they do. So usually this gateway is for um, either strengthening your relationship with a current mate that you already have, and you see, you know, something that you want with them, or also, you know, aligning you with your sacred mate if they're not in your life already you know doing the work to call them in and prepare yourself for that type of union and that it'd be a sacred one so a lot of my relationship work when it comes to romantic relationships often has to do with how I feel about myself and usually the relationships that I attract at different points of my life are mirrors for me and show me where I, whatever season of my life that I'm in, how I'm feeling about myself. That's just how my romantic relationships show up in my life. They show up as my mirrors. My significant others show up as my mirrors. They show me where my thoughts are at and where my energy is at. And so I'm in a situation now where I am, I have reunited with someone that I dated a long time ago and if any, he is one that I I am open. Like, I want to see where this goes. Um, I never stopped caring about him. I never stopped loving him. It's just at the time, he was my mirror showing me that I wasn't, I wasn't ready for where that relationship had potential to go. And that was a piece of humble pie that I had to eat, you know, earlier. I would say like, you know, a couple months ago when I really started thinking about all of this and reflecting on it, especially when he came back into my life, I had to be honest with myself because before my story was all about that he wasn't ready for what I was ready for. And after a while, I had to be honest with myself when he came back into my life that I wasn't ready for the potential either. So I had to take some accountability and personal responsibility. And it wasn't about beating myself up, but it was about, this isn't about, a, you know, blaming somebody. I wasn't ready either. And he was my mirror showing me where my thoughts about myself, my worthiness, and all of that was at the time. And I appreciate that lesson so, so much more now. So second chance, right? second chance at this obviously it's been six years so we dated we dated six years ago so six years later you know we've been through more life experiences we've grown more we're older you know hopefully we've grown and changed for the better in a lot of ways and so I I want to do the work that I need to do obviously to be where I want to be with myself because I know now how I feel about myself determines what kind of relationships that I attract, right? So one of the things that I had to do in a spiritual reading that I got, uh, when was that? Was that last month? I think it was last month. One of the things that I was told was that, again, you know, it was about me and how I felt about myself, but that I, it's not that I hold grudges, but that people that have hurt me and that I didn't get a chance to share how I felt, I 
instead of like taking a part of them with me, I left a part of me with them. And part of my homework from that reading was to not necessarily think about every single person, but more so think about the different seasons of my life and where I felt this way and where I felt like I may have left. It was referred to as keys with these different people. And so part of the healing work for me, how I did it, and I think I talked about this in another video, is that I I would basically work with the Akashic Records and go back to different people, different scenarios, different situations, or just overall different chunks of time in my life and would just affirm like I am retrieving my keys. I'm taking my keys back. If it was a specific experience that I remember or a specific person that I felt that I definitely needed to get my keys back from that I had left some with, I would go back and tell them how I felt. And me telling them how I felt, it wasn't in a way of attacking anybody, but it was really me freeing myself and expressing how I was feeling and not just keeping it buried deep down inside. I definitely talked about this in another one of my videos, so I won't go into great detail. But anyway, there was one person in particular, a young man that I was dating earlier this year, that it just it wasn't a healthy it wasn't a healthy relationship. It was it was pretty toxic and he just wasn't a happy person. And because he wasn't happy, he just wasn't very kind all of the time. And so this person in particular, the reader is like, you really left a suitcase of stuff with this person and you need to get it back. And, you know, if you need to employ the help of Archangel Michael, then do that because he's definitely coming. He's definitely showing up and he's he's there to support you if you need it. And so I've been doing this work basically all of this month, just different scenarios, different people and just expressing how I felt or saying what I wanted to say back then, but also saying it with the knowledge and the experience that I have now and the perspective that I have now and being able to productively share how I felt. And what I noticed when I was doing this exercise, doing this work, again, I wasn't going back to these people and blaming them. And I could have, you know, I could have, but I'm really starting to see it was never about those people. And it has always been about me and how I feel about myself and the importance of me being able to express myself because I can't control how anybody receives anything that I share or say. It could be the most polite thing that I say and somebody's gonna misconstrue it, but I can't control how somebody interprets what I say. But I can control what energy I put behind it and I can control that it's important for me to be able to express myself. So um, this person, like I said, this young man, I knew that I had to retrieve um, a lot from him, but it actually wasn't as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. Because in doing this work, I actually realized a lot of my keys that I had to retrieve were from my parents. And that, that I don't want to say it had a domino effect, but it affected a lot of my other relationships and how I interacted with other people in my life. So I think because I did the work in retrieving my keys from my parents and, you know, other people, this it wasn't as bad as I wouldn't say as bad but it just I guess it wasn't as dramatic as I thought because you know when someone tells you okay you have to retrieve some keys from this person but this person you got to retrieve a suitcase and this and that and you're like oh gosh but it wasn't like that so I'm gonna get into it so I did a self-healing session with Maldivite. Maldivite is a it's not a crystal actually it is actually glass but it is from a meteorite that hit the earth uh, 15 million years ago something like that like a long time ago anyway it's a very powerful high vibrational stone and i'm pretty sure i've talked about it in other videos as well but i did because all of this has to do with my womb work and this fibroid and basically like i'm i'm the one to heal my lineage of women and grandmothers who have dealt with 
the womb weeping essentially come to find out like since being home and talking to my mother and asking more questions my grandmother had a hysterectomy so i'm thinking if she had a hysterectomy there were probably some fibroids or some other issues going on my mother had fibroids and had to have um them removed she didn't have a hysterectomy like she still has her um she still has like her womb and all of that in that regard so you know just digging into this and the thing that the the theme that kept showing up was in talking about you know my grandmother and my great grandmothers and just things that they were going through in life was there was a lot of shame and there was a lot of resentment and you know that that energy does it does stay in our womb and you can pass that down and so I was just like how we got to release this I don't want any more generations of daughters to to feel that to have that you know I want to be the one to heal that in my lineage so it's just it's been really interesting and very healing being home you know and talking and getting this information to help me to help me see like how to heal myself and then in turn how that heals my ancestors how that heals my future daughters and so on and so forth so back to back to this so i do this session i have the moldavite and i do i call in archangel michael and i'm like you know what i'm ready i'm ready to get this suitcase back from this young man and i'm just ready to move on with my life now this we had a very strong connection um he was a he was a karmic lesson and so karmic relationships are hard <laughs> they just they're in your face and they really are trying to get you to heal and grow from different things and it makes you very uncomfortable because that's the only way that you're going to grow and that you're going to change and do things differently what you need to do and so i had already done a cord cutting ceremony there are there was a bunch of other things that actually kind of led up to this that i've had to do to really release myself of my energy in the in the uh in him in my feelings about the relationship my feelings about myself in it all of those things um but you know everything happens for a reason so I tell Archangel Michael I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. And he appears on my right hand side, my right side. He's like, all right, let's do this. And so next thing I know, I am in front of a house. I'm in front of a house that looks like it's in a suburban, a quiet suburban neighborhood on a cul-de-sac, on a lot, um, on a cul-de-sac. And it's just a regular, like, nice looking suburban house. It feels like it was like early in the morning. I mean, the, the sunlight was definitely, the sun was definitely up, but it was like a time of the morning where it's like before everyone starts waking up. So it's still like very peaceful and quiet before everyone starts waking up, you know, the hustle and bustle, driving their cars, all of that stuff. And so I look at the house and then I signal to Archangel Michael. I'm like, I'm like, I'm ready to go in and get the bag. And so Archangel Michael goes in in front of me and opens the door and the door is open. It's not locked opens the door and the house when you walk in there's a front door and there's like a like an entranceway like a corridor like a hallway um and so as soon as he opens the door and I walk in behind him the young man is like right there on the right hand side when I'm coming in the door and so almost right away before he can even get a word out Archangel Michael pins him to the wall and it wasn't done in like a violent way but it was just like shut up she needs to get her stuff and we're out of here it wasn't like a you know I want to torture you and all of that it was just like don't even try it don't say anything she's coming to get her stuff and we're out and that's it so I go in and it's not very far into the entranceway and my bags are there come to find out child I had a carry-on suitcase and an oversized tote bag. <laughs> so I had a lot of, you know, I had a lot of energy and things that I had left with him. And I was like, oh shit. I hear I am thinking it was like a little suitcase, but it's a suitcase, carry-on size, and an oversized tote bag. Like, honey. 
So I go, and it's a nice suitcase, and it's a nice, it's that Reeve Goach tote bag, the one by, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a designer one. I'm not really into like designer things like that, but basically this was like nice luggage, and there was stuff in there, sorry, something in my hair. Okay, so it wasn't that far from the doorway, and I remember being like, this is interesting. I'm like, either he, it's like he knew I was coming for it, or it was always there all along, and he just never touched it. Either way, I was like, this is interesting. So I go, I get my bag, and I'm looking at Michael like, all right, I got my stuff, I'm going out. So now when I'm coming back, obviously Archangel Michael and the young man is on my left-hand side on the on the wall. And Archangel Michael, like when he talks to me, he doesn't verbally talk to me. It's kind of more of like, I guess, a telepathic kind of communication because it's not moving, it's not moving my, it's, it's just a different kind of way of communicating. But anyway, he asked me, you know, is there anything that you want to say to him before we roll? Because you got your stuff. Is there anything you want to say, you know, before we get out of here? And I said, I looked and it's like I didn't, I couldn't really see him. Like he was there, but I, I wasn't really seeing him. But I just looked at him and I was just like, I think I said, thank you. And I said, take care. And I'm like, I'm out. So then I go out. And Archangel Michael is like, keep looking forward, like don't look behind. And it was kind of, it reminded me of like Sodom and Gomorrah and, you know, turning into the pillar of salt because Archangel Michael was just like, don't look, just don't turn around and look, like keep walking out towards the door. And as I got close to the door, I could tell that the young man, he turned into a pillar of salt, like he dissolved and he turned into salt and was just like a pile of salt I knew that but I didn't see it because I didn't turn around and look but I had the cognizance just the knowing that he had turned into salt and was on the floor so we get out and um I'm outside with Archangel Michael and he's like you know let's just let's keep rolling and then the young man who returned into my life I'm just standing there like, wow, I have like, I'm looking at my suitcase and all this stuff. And the other thing that happened is like all the keys that were in the oversized tote bag and in the suitcase kind of like reabsorbed back into my body. And it's like, I could just feel like, like returning to myself essentially. And also all the lessons that I learned from that relationship with that young man I could feel it all like fusing back into my body. So it was like I was coming back into myself. And I, it was also, I guess for me, confirmation that like I learned a lot and that it was also the lessons that I learned were a part of me now. So I'm just kind of standing there now, just like in awe of like, you know, what happened. And also like, wow, that wasn't like as dramatic and as crazy as I thought it was going to be. And then um, I turned around. So I was like, I left the house and I was facing the house, just kind of looking like, just like, wow, did this happen? And um, I turned around and the young man who we dated previously and has returned in my life, he was there. And he just, I remember I just gave him the biggest hug and he just held me. I didn't expect him to be there because obviously I'm thinking, you know, this is work that I have to do on my own, but he was there and I just, I just hugged him. I just hugged him. And then Archangel Michael was like, all right, we got to go, you know, let's, let's get up, let's get out of here. We got to go. And so I think it's some, oh, I know what happened. So Archangel Michael, so the young man that I'm dealing with now, he picked me up. He picked me up like I was a baby like just held me like I was a baby and we start walking. Archangel Michael has the suitcase and the stuff and we start walking and the house that um, the other young man was in who turned into to salt, blew, it went up in violet, violet color flames. House goes up in flames and it's kind of like an explosion but you can't hear the explosion. And then like, you know, obviously like there's debris and stuff from the house, like flying everywhere. But Archangel Michael takes his wings and he covers, he wraps them around me and my new 
you know, my significant other who's returning to my life around us and he protects us as this house has exploded and the debris is going everywhere. And the house is like lit up in violet flames. Wow. So that happens. We're just there. And I think for me, that also signified, I guess, just how supported that I am and that there's so many layers of support. There's so many forces seen and unseen. Um, gosh, that I feel like I'm going to cry that just like they care about me, you know, <laughs> they care about me and just want to support me and help me because it was like, you know, you had Archangel Michael around his wings, around me. Then you have my current significant other holding me in his arms. And then, of course, you just have me, you know, that is that is life force energy. That is God in a way. I am a unique expression of God. We all are. And it was just like in that moment, I was just so present and was just like, I I am love and I'm surrounded by so much love like it was very uh beautiful feeling that it was just like wow um you know I I am loved and cared for and supported and that I don't have to do any of this alone or by myself and that it's like okay to be to be vulnerable and that you know not everybody is going to hurt you that they're like I said, there are just there are forces seen and unseen that all they want to do is see you win. All they want to do is love you and be there for you and affirm the truth in you. And so that happened. And then I kind of feel like I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I was laying on the ground inside of underneath my willow tree. So when I meditate, I have a place a place that I go to when I meditate and it's normally this willow tree that I that I go to that is by like a river or a stream it's a very calm place and it's my place nobody else ever shows up in this this meditative space that I am am in and so I'm like laying on the ground and it's almost like I'm waking up and I am at my tree at my willow tree by the water and I just, I just was like, oh my gosh, like, it's done. It's done. But isn't that wild? Like, he turned into salt. And the house exploded. And it's just like, it's done. You've learned the lesson. And I really do feel like Archangel Michael telling me, you know, don't look behind. It's not like I was going to turn into a pillar of salt myself. Like, exactly like the biblical story. But I think it was more so like why like you got to move forward there's no need to look back anymore the past is done you have healed you have learned the lessons you've gotten your keys back you've gotten your bags back you know which really I guess was more so like my baggage but um but even that I remember the baggage being like you know I need to take the contents out put them in you know the washer and all of that and even that washing like symbolized recycling that energy from any negative energy or energy that just wasn't the truth about me and recycling that back into positive energy and the truth about me but I wow wow <laughs> I'm really thankful on so many different levels and I think for me my relationships, rather they be romantic, professional, familial, whatever, are always a reflection of how I am feeling about myself. And when I feel at ease with myself, I don't really feel a lot of conflict. And, you know, that's, uh, that's what matters. That's what matters. Even really quickly, you know, coming home... I felt like I was going to have to have like this dramatic conversation with some of my family members about boundaries and this and that. And what I found is that no one overstepped my boundaries the whole time I was here. In fact, everybody was very accommodating because I eat, my diet is different than theirs. I'm basically like a pescatarian, but plant-based too. But they were like very accommodating. 
No one was just like, oh, that's crazy, or why can't you eat what's here? None of that. Everyone was very accommodating. Even in, like, other areas or topics, like, I just didn't feel like my boundaries were crossed. And I realized that when you are at ease with yourself and you're just yourself unapologetically and you feel you feel free to express yourself a lot of times certain discords and things like that don't show up because you're not resisting life you're not resisting yourself you're in flow with yourself and that's not to say it's going to be like this every single time, but I think also just my perception of things is different because I'm just more at ease with myself. I just, I am who I am. There's nothing wrong with me. It's not bad. And I really am getting to a place where my personality now can really fully develop because I'm not trying to twist it into something else and I'm not judging it and saying oh I should be more like this or I should be more like that it's just like this is who I am I'm always growing expanding and I love learning new things but there's nothing wrong with me the way that I am so I can love myself and continue to grow and expand but who I am right now is more than enough and is fine and there's nothing wrong with it so this was way longer than I wanted it to be, but I had to share this. I had to document this. It was really special, and really important. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Uh, be blessed, be well, stay fly, and stay flourishing.